Next phase of this video is calibrating the equipment. It's one of the most important things an owner can do and should do before he ever goes out and deliver, delivers concrete. We're going to calibrate cement, sand, and stone to develop flows and our constants and so we can develop the uh, mix designs for the different concrete that we want to do. We're set up. Some of the equipment that's required for calibration is we have a rubber flap to act as a diverter in the mixer so all the material flows out. We'll get that put in the mixer. That goes in the hopper area <clears throat> so that we can uh, divert all the aggregate out of the, uh, the uh, mixer hopper and catch it in the container. We also have a scale which is on the ground there that will tear out the container and of course a container to catch the material. Mixer is always in an upright position when we're catching because we, we want to make sure we catch all the material coming off the conveyor belt. Sean's just making sure everything's good to go. We're going to calibrate cement first and, and once we get the container teared We'll uh, do a test run first, make sure we have proper discharge of cement, that everything's charged and ready to go. So he's tearing out the container right now so that it will be zeroed. Okay, container's teared, he'll put it underneath the hopper. <coughs> we'll do all calibration at operating speed. So the motor will pick up, we have the vibrators turned on in the auto position for the cement, and we're good to go. That ought to be enough. Well, vibrators ain't hitting very often. Okay. This one we're not going to weigh. It'll just be dumped. Uh, you, can, you can either dump it and waste it in your machine, or if you have the ability, you can put it back in the cement bin to reuse it. We're just going to dump it in the loader. <clears throat> now while we're doing cement, we're going to time the discharge for our admixture um, dosage rates. We're also going to record the counts and we'll record that weight. Those are the three things on cement that we have to, to record. <clears throat> Sean has a stopwatch. He'll watch his counter and we'll run the counts to 100 counts and stop and we'll weigh the material. What we're looking for in calibration is consistency on the cement. Okay, he's run 99 counts. He stopped his stopwatch at the time he shut his conveyor off. And we're going to weigh this to determine what our weight is. <clears throat> There's nothing magic about 100 counts. We just want to run as large a count as we can to where two people can still pick the weight up. There may be some DOT requirements, so you have to run more material. Uh, that would depend on your state and your uh, authorities at that time. Uh, for us, for our, our sample and test today, we're going to run 100 counts on the cement, and that's good enough. And once he gets a weight, we'll record the time, he'll record the counts, and we'll record the weight on a, on a piece of paper. What do you got? 99 counts, 108.5 pounds in 12.22 seconds. Okay, so 12.2 seconds, 108 pounds in 99 counts. So that's our first batch. He'll run another one, and we'll have some comparisons. We'll, we may do three samples, four samples. Like I said, we're looking for consistency on this is what we're looking for. 
So what he'll do is he'll zero the counter, he'll get his stopwatch and zero it. Again, it'll be done at, at operating speed. Do we need to bump the vibrator? So it's going to bump the vibrators just a little bit, make sure we're working good. Again, he ran 99 counts. What was your weight? 107.5. Pardon? 107.5. 107.5, so we lost about a half a pound to a pound. 12.1 seconds. Okay, he'll zero the counter again, bring his throttle up, and do a stopwatch, and we'll run to another batch. at 98, 98, so it'll be a little less anyway. 99, your weight? 98 pounds. 98 pounds, pardon? 106 pounds. 106 pounds. He's a little less on his counts, so a little less weight, and we, we would expect that. Another 12.1, okay. I've done three batches on the cement. They appear to be very consistent. You know, we're within that 1%. And that's, that's fine. You know, ASTM says plus or minus 1%. We're good to go there. So we're going to shut the cement off and, and disengage the clutch, disengage the transfer auger, and we're going to put, you're going to put sand or stone? Sand? Okay, so we're going to put a bucket of sand in it and get ready to do our calibration on sand. Okay, we're going to set the gates now. We have sand in the sand side, so he's going to set the gate opening at two. I also want him to close the stone gate. 
and, and just have it barely off the belt. That will stop any residue or spillover that would be beyond the unit uh, on the belt. And then he's going to set his vibrator so that the sand vibrator is working. And then we'll do our sample and, and uh, do our charging of the belt and start recording weights. He's putting the tub underneath it. This first run, we're not going to weigh. He's just charging the belt, making sure we have all the voids filled in if there's a void area where the sand would build up. So the first one just to run, get it charged, so we got a nice level strike off to the discharge end. We'll run a little sample here, maybe 100 pounds off, and then we'll dump it. We, ate, we put about one loader bucket of uh, material in it, that way We've got a good uh, representation of the material. We won't run out during the calibration, so we get good strike-offs and good recording. We're going to do two samples on the low setting. We're going to run about 100 counts again on this uh, first run. It's counter zero. We're not timing it. There's no reason to time the sand because all my timing is off the, the constant, which is the cement discharge. So we're just going to record counts, net weight, and the gate opening. Of course, again, we have the throttle at the uh, operating speed. All calibration, again, is done during the operation high idle on the trucks. <clears throat> he ran 99 counts. He's getting the weight on the material. The container's still zeroed out, so the weight will be whatever material he has in it. and he'll dump it. Again, he'll record his counts, he'll record his net weight, and his gate setting on the paperwork. Okay, 99 counts, 46.5 pounds is what we took out the first time. Again, he'll run another batch just like we did. Same gate setting. You must not have been charged. He's got a lot more weight out of the unit this time, so apparently he didn't run it long enough the first time. So we'll do another one. Again, we're looking for some consistency here. Aggregates are kind of strange. They may vary a little bit. We're going to do an average when we put it in the system anyway. So if we get two that are real close, we're good to go. Again, he's recording his gate setting, his counts, and the weight. 99 and 101. 99 and 101 on the weight. So he had 99 counts, 101. We're going to run another one on this low setting.
almost the same, it looks like. Okay, we've had two within a half a pound. So I've done fine. We've got our sample that we need. We're gonna reset the gate to four and we'll have to recharge it because I wanna move the step in the aggregate that we change at the gate opening to the discharge point. And of course, we'll run lower setting or lower counts also at that time. Being as we have a higher gate opening, we're gonna lower our counts down to 50 instead of 100 because we're dumping more material off that belt. So he's gonna run 50 counts at a gate setting of four. We had 51 counts and 111 pounds. And we'll do one more and, and weigh it again. He's got one less count, so we should have a little bit less weight. Fifty counts and 107 pounds. That's good enough for the sand. We'll take the truck out and unload the sand and then we'll put stone in and we repeat the same process again. Okay, we have now put stone in the truck. We've taken the sand out so we can calibrate the stone. Sean's gonna set his gate at, at a uh, low setting and also turn the vibrators off so that, that uh, we're not running vibrators. No need to run the vibrators for the stone. It'll flow just fine. And uh, he'll set his low setting. What, what are you gonna set at, Sean? Okay, we're gonna set at three. The low setting needs to be wide enough so we don't choke off the stone or anything. We want a good flow on it. So, so we've picked three, it's a good opening. He's gonna charge the belt again, get material flow, and we'll just dump the first one, and then the second one will start recording our weights.
Okay. He's going to re -zero, zero out his counter. We're going to run another 100 counts and weigh the material. He's going to record the weight, record the gate setting, and he'll record the counts. What was the weight? 100 counts, 115 pounds. 100 counts, 115 pounds. He'll reel it zero out his counter. We're going to run another sample. Okay, 100 counts, 114.5 was the weight. We're within a half a pound of the other run. We're going to reset the gate to a higher setting. We're going to go to a five. We'll go to a five setting. He'll recharge the belt again. We've got to move that step of material to the back so that we're getting consistent flow of material, depth of material on that belt. Or this one we don't weigh. He'll cut his counts in half. He'll be down to 50 because I got a deeper pocket now coming off the belt. And again, we'll weigh the material and record it. Hundred and one. Fifty counts. One hundred and thirteen point five was the weight. We'll record that. We'll run another sample. See where we're at. It's 50 counts, 115 pounds. It's good enough for our samples. 
we'll go in and do our graphs, get our mixed designs to, designed, and then we'll come out and pour concrete to uh, get our yield tests, confirm some mixed designs. Now that we have our data from weighing all the material, the sand, the stone, and cement from the unit, we're going to take this data now and enter into the computer program. What the computer program will do for you is, is we'll figure our counts per bag, which is one important factor, our seconds discharge to the bag. It'll also take and develop the material flow graphs from the Cementec uh, calibration page. It, it, it also then will allow me to develop mixed designs and depending on how many different mixed designs we want, it'll, it'll calculate this all for us. The thing after we get the mixed designs done, then we'll go out and we'll do a yield test and confirm that our mixed designs are correct and that the um, yield box will come out okay. The one thing with our units, the Cementec units, is my cement is my constant on that unit. Everything else is variable, so the count per bag, my counts per yard, will always be the constant on this unit, and and we will will uh, build our constants or our variables around that constant, and and de set our mix designs up. This is a Cementec preparatory program. Um, it is available to our customers. And any unit that is purchased will come with this program to help you through your calibrations. And at the end of your calibrations, we would like to have all your information sent to us. Let's get our data entered, and we'll get some figures. Okay, we're going to enter the data. I'm starting with the cement first. I click into the blue box where it says counts. I had first run was 99 counts. The second run was 99 counts. And my third run was 98 counts. I'm going to put the weight in the gross. Even though that, that we weighed and did the tear weight, it'll, it'll uh, take it in. It's 106 was the first one. The second one was 107.5, and the third one was 108.5. And I come down to time, it was 12.22, 12.1, Now, if you noticed off to the side here, there's an A, B, and C. Those are the important numbers that we need to determine our counts and it's automatically totaled those, those columns. And we'll roll down. First magic number, as I call it, is counts per bag. That, that comes up to 86. And what that equates to is every 86 counts, I have discharged 94 pounds of cement. The other number that we would, were concerned about, we timed the cement. And on this, this unit, I'm getting a bag of cement every 10.7 seconds. Um, that lets us figure our admixes, uh, discharge times, whatever data you may need. Down at the bottom here where it says aggregate one, I'm going to click on it and we're going to enter the sand. It's important to put the name up here in the top box where it says type of aggregate because in the mixed design seats, sheets we have to have that. So I have sand. I move down here to the gate setting, and our first setting was two. It'll automatically put the other three in, and I'll come over to the high setting, and we ran a four setting on the high setting. Come over here to counts. On the first run, we won 99 counts, and we run 99 counts on the second one. On the gross weight, I had 100.5 and 101 or the tear weight, pardon me. On the high setting, we ran 51 counts and 50 counts on the second one. Total weight was 107 and 111. Again, 
the computer has added these together and it gives me total pounds divided total counts gives me pounds per count so on the low setting we were discharging 1.0 pounds per count on the high setting was 2.2 pounds per count what the computer has done now it has drawn a material flow graph and at the bottom of the graph is gate settings and on the the side is my pounds per count and the computer goes back to this graph to determine gate settings when we we do a mix design we had a second aggregate and that would have been stone so we'll put stone in in the column again my gate settings I had three on the low setting and five on the high setting total counts was a hundred on the first run and a hundred on the second run and on my high setting it was 50 and 50 while I'm here my net weight taken out was 115 and 113.5 and on the low setting it was 114.5 and 115 again the computer is taken my pounds per count is 1.1 on the low setting and 2.3 on the high setting again it is drawn a graph versus gate setting versus pounds per count and we'll move over to a mix design here's my mix design and on our mix design we did a a 4,000 we'll do a 4,000 pound mix BSI and I'll date it 12 09 2010 it's always nice to date it that way we we know what date this this mix design was done on the cement discharge speed on our units we we can have a flowable fill system on it which is like a 20 to a 50 percent reduction but in normal concrete we run it in the standard 100 percent so we would put 100 in here and it automatically has entered my count per bag from the first sheet on the cement it's 86 to do a 4,000 pound mix to me that is a six bag mix and if you take six times 94 that's 564 pounds of cement so 564 goes into the cement then in the, the, the description here, the name of the aggregate, I got sand and stone. If I had two other stones, I could name them and have graphs. You come over to the blue box on aggregate one, we'll put the sand in there. So I'll put a number one here. Right here's your number that you pick it up from. Automatically has put sand in the name of the description. And of course, the other one will be for the stone. How much material does it take to make a yard of concrete? We're estimating this. I, I haven't gone to a lab, requested any, any mix designs. Well, as a rule of thumb, it'll take approximately 3,000, 3,100 pounds of material. So let's put in here um, 1625 for stone, and we'll put it about 1,425 pounds of sand. Now what this has done is it has taken those weights and it's done these formulas for us. Six bags of cement times counts per bag, which is 86, is 518 counts. That is the one constant on a six bag mix on this unit. Every 518 counts, I have discharged six bags of cement. The object is to get enough aggregate in it now so the yield box will yield out correctly. I put 1,425 pounds of sand divided by counts per yard, 518, to comes to 2.75. And what the computer does is it go back to the graph on the sand, on the aggregate one, and it is located at 2.75. And it says my gate setting should be at 5.0. It's done the same thing on aggregate two, 1625 divided by the same count, 518, is 3.13 pounds per count of the stone. 
Again, it went to the graph and it's located, my gate setting should be 6.5. And what that, that tells us is that's where my starting point is. That's where we'll do the, the uh, gate settings and do the yield test. Okay, we've done our calculations, figured our mix designs. Uh, we're using an estimated mix design. We're going to do a six bag mix. We're going to confirm the mix design by doing a yield test. Uh, the object of the yield test is to, to make sure that we're putting the proper amount of aggregate in it. The one thing we do know is the cement count is the constant. It's correct. Uh, the the uh, aggregates are the, the uh, exception and uh, that's why we're doing a volume test. On the computer, it says that my sand gate should be at uh, 4.7 and 6.2 on the stone. I am going to put a little ab mix in this. We're going to run a little air, and that should be set at 5.3. And my ab mix 2, we're going to put calcium in because it it's cold, uh, is going to be set at 2.8. Again, this going to be about a 4,000 pound mix. We're going to charge the mixer first and get my slump and then we'll swing it over into the box, zero the counter, and every 130 counts should give me that, that quarter yard for this six bag mix. And the object is this box is level full in that 130 counts. So we'll get things started here. Go ahead. We've throttled up the engine. He's gonna start the mixer and the conveyor. We're going to look at the slump. I want a fluid ice slump. That looks pretty good. He's stopping. We'll get the box, swing the mixer over and get it in the box. Zero is counter. 130 counts. So he'll run it to 130 counts and stop it. Whether the box is full, running over, or it's short. We want to see where we end up. Okay, we'll shake that in a little bit. As you notice, it is a little low. We've come up about an inch short of this box being level full. So what that means is we're not putting enough aggregate in it. We have plenty of cement. I know my cement is the constant, so we need to open the gates. And we'll go up about uh, three points with the two gates. Go to five on the sand, and we'll go to six, five on the uh, stone. And we'll reset the box, and we'll do another, another test run. Now he'll have to run the mixer again and reset his slump and get that change in that, mix, that gate through the mixer. So we'll run a little more through it. Okay, he's run quite a bit through it, so we should be able to reset the counter, swing the chute over into the hopper, the box, and we'll run another yield test to see if we come out. The object again is to get it level full. Yeah, it looks pretty close. Tap it down. We took a board and struck that off. 
we'd be real close to having a level fall. So that tells us now on a six bag mix, our 4,000 PSI strength that we're trying to achieve, my gauge should be at 5.0 and 6.5. And what we'll do is we get back into the computer, we'll recalculate our weights and see where that puts us on our weights and, and our mix design. Uh, one thing on this is we did not go to a lab with the materials to determine an actual mix design. We're estimating this. What we would do now is take core samples uh, for, for test cylinders and, and get some actual test results to make sure that our mix design will create that 4,000 PSI that we're looking for. Okay, to review what we've done, uh, we have gone over to maintenance on the machine. We've talked about the operations on the unit. Uh, this was a standard unit. Your, your unit may be a little different. We've also reviewed the calibrations and the procedures of how to do it. This is very important that you do this so that you get proper settings and proper concrete to your customers. We've also sat down and figured mixed designs and reviewed the uh, Cementec calibration program. And then we went out and did a yield test and confirmed that the estimated mix design is correct and that we yield properly. These are all important steps to have a successful business and startup. I thank you for your time and your attention.